Hi everyone, this is a video about our wider reopening from Monday the 8th of March. You'll have seen the announcements made last week and I did send a text out to say that we were putting a plan together with as always health and safety at uh, the sharp end of it if you like. We've done that plan now and you'll see alongside this video on the website a written version of the plan but this video is just going to take you through from next Monday for each year group exactly how the return looks. Because of the mass testing we can't do every year group in one day therefore we're going to have a slightly staggered start Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week and we hope to have all children back in school by next Wednesday. So I'm down at the sports hall and as you know part of the reopening of schools from the 8th is based around this mass testing. Now if your child's been in school they will have already done what we call a lateral flow test this term. However if they haven't then it might be something that's quite new to you. A separate video will show you exactly how the lateral flow tests are conducted but this vid part of the video is all about the return. So every child will be returning as I said before next week. We're going to start on Monday the 8th from nine o'clock with year 10. The reason for year 10 is because it's our smallest year group, so it allows us, for the very first time, trying to get a full year group through the testing, it just allows us a bit more time on that Monday morning to do it. So year 10 will arrive in a staggered way. Each form will be given a time slot. So we'll be starting with a form at nine o'clock, then another one at 9.30, 10 o'clock and 10.30 and so on. Once the form has arrived, they'll line up in alphabetical order here outside the sports hall. They'll go in for the test. The test only takes about a minute. And then once all the children in that particular form have been tested, they'll go and wait on the tennis courts. Once we get all the negative results back, and we hope obviously all the results are negative, then that class can go back to class. Once we've done all of year 10, then they will have returned. They'll be in class then for the rest of the week and going forward. I'll talk in a moment about what happens if we have a positive test using one of the lateral flow devices. But once we have year 10 through on that Monday morning and they're back in class, we will then start at 12 o'clock, that's lunchtime, again at 30 minute intervals to get year 11 back in. But year 11 will come in, they'll stay with us until we get their test result and then they'll be allowed to go home because obviously it's going to take the full afternoon. There's no point in some of the students going back to class and not others. So year 11 will be tested on Monday afternoon, but they won't actually return to class as normal until the Tuesday morning. So on Tuesday, we will start again at nine o'clock with year 11 returning to class. So that means on Monday, we'll have the whole of Key Stage 4, years 10 and 11, fully tested. It's really, really, really important that the time that is given for your child to attend for their test, that they do it then. It will slow or even stop the return of students if we have a real backlog of students because they didn't turn up for the test at the right time. So it's mightily important that they come in and do the test at the right time. So that's Monday the 8th. Tuesday, we will have year nine returning. Now remember year nine start at 8.30. They will come in through the play football entrance at the back of school, line up outside the sports hall as where I'm stood now, and they will rather like year 10 on the Monday at 30 minute intervals, they will go through the testing. Once all their class is negative, they'll go back to lessons. So by lunchtime Tuesday, we'll have years 10 and 11 in school and year nine fully in school. Then on Tuesday afternoon from 12, we'll start to bring year eight in at 30 minute intervals, a form group at a time. They'll come in through the back entrance of play football, again, line up outside the sports hall and they will have their test. But rather like year 11 on the Monday, they will then go home after their test once we've got all the negative results from that class. And they will come and recommence their lessons from Wednesday morning. So by the start of Wednesday, we've got four year groups fully in school. From 8.30 on Wednesday, we'll have year seven coming in for their tests. Again, they'll come in through the play football entrance at the back of school, line up outside the sports hall, a form group at a time, we'll do the testing, and then by lunchtime of the Wednesday, we'll have year seven back in lessons too. So by mid-morning to lunchtime on the Wednesday, all five year groups will be back in school. The reason for doing it in a staggered way so that we can get all the students back into their classrooms safely following the test 
but in a quick period of time. Many schools are going for lots of different options. I feel they've been out of school for far too long and it's really, really important that we get them back as quickly as possible, but we have to be, make sure that everything's safe and this is the safest way of doing it. Right, so here I am once again in our testing centre. The testing centre has been up and running since early January and we've been testing key worker and vulnerable children along with staff at regular intervals. We're now going to upscale this operation into the main part of the sports hall to enable us to get through 787 students over the course of three days. I know some of parents have been slightly concerned about the testing. It's very, very quick and it's very, very safe. It just involves a, a short swab at the back of your mouth and in the nasal cavity. We get the result a few minutes later, usually about 10, 15 minutes later. If it's negative, brilliant, the students go back to class. As I say, I'll mention positive tests in a moment, but it's very, very simple and it's very, very safe. If we do have a positive case, then like we were doing before Christmas, there will be um, a message out to the staff that pupil will be isolated, they'll be sent home, and you will be given what we call a PCR test. They're the test that gets sent off to the laboratory for the results. You'll be given one of those to do again at home, and that will act as a confirmatory test as to whether the result is a positive or what we call a false positive. If it's positive, then they will isolate for 10 days as they have been doing. If it's negative at the PCR test, then the student can return to school. And that's how the system will work. So that's the plan. And it's based, as you know, around this idea of mass testing. The tests are really, really important, so we need those consent forms into school. We've got the vast majority, but if you haven't yet sent it in, either completing the Google form or you, or you got it through the post, you can take a photo of it, get it into us on the admin email address, and then we've got that information. The testing's important because if there are asymptomatic cases on the return, that's those people who've got the virus but don't have any symptoms, then we can isolate those quickly and we're not then sending bubbles home again. It's so exciting to have a school reopening again after what feels like ages. We're on the last home stretch of this pandemic, hopefully, and therefore we don't want any more hiccups. And if we have to start sending bubbles home in the first few weeks, it will be really, really, really sad for all concerned. So if there are any cases in school, we need to find them out. You do have that confirmatory PCR test after this. So people who are concerned about false positive tests needn't be because there will be that confirmation test as well. But if there are positive cases, we do need them isolating so that we can keep everybody in the school building safe. It's exciting times and we feel like we're really nearly there. But the last thing I want to say is on masks. We've been wearing masks in communal spaces and we've been wearing them uh, in the canteen, on the corridors, etc., since the start of September. But the government guidance has changed for this return and students will now be expected to wear masks at all times unless they're eating or they're outside. Is it ideal that a student has to wear a mask in class? Of course it's not and there will be some medical exemptions and we know that, there have been since September but we're on the home straight and we cannot socially distance inside our classrooms. They sit up to 30 students and we can't reduce class sizes. We just don't have the space or the staff. So wearing masks for staff, for students, etc., is going to be another facet of health and safety that we need to put in place, hopefully just for the last three weeks until the Easter holidays. We're only back for three weeks and it's really important that we put everything into health and safety as we can. Once your child's been tested and they return to school, they will have two further tests in school and then it'll be over to you as parents and carers because the testing will take place in the last week and a half at home. I'll do a separate video with some guides as to how to use the home kits closer to the time. Ventilation. I know this has been a hot topic of discussion amongst parents and carers on Facebook and other social media. Do we have openable windows in classrooms at Aspire? The answer to that question is no, we don't. But please, I can almost hear the sharp intake of breath from some parents, please be assured that that is not a problem. We have a ventilation system that works very, very, very 
carefully on levels of CO2 and temperature in each classroom. So when Aspire was built in 2015, they decided that openable, wi openable windows would disturb that balance. So each classroom is its standalone room. Air does not circulate between classrooms. There's firewalls between every single classroom. So cool air is brought in via one vent in the ceiling area. It's piped into each classroom separately. That air circulates in the classroom and then is expelled via a different ventilation shaft to the outside. So each room is standalone and each room has its own ventilation system which works on a fine balance between levels of CO2, so depending on how many students are in the room breathing out, and also the temperature of the room. We've had it fully serviced on more than one occasion since the pandemic began and it works perfectly well. We've even had parents complaining that it's too cold in certain classrooms and the reason for that is because the ventilation system on a cold day is piping that really freezing cold air into the classrooms and it's overpowering the heating system. So rest assured that there is nothing wrong with the ventilation at Aspire and that it works perfectly fine and I just wanted to make that point and dispel some myths that have clearly been circulating, no pun intended, in the community. So I think that's all the information that you need about the wider reopening from Monday the 8th. If you do have any concerns, queries, questions, whatever they may be, either speak to your wellbeing caller this week or contact us via the switchboard 353155 or via that admin email address. It's really important that this week all that remote learning keeps going and for the year groups that don't come back on Monday, for example, they'll still be remote learning that day and for the year group like year seven doesn't come back until the Wednesday, Monday and Tuesday of next week we'll also have the remote learning. It's really important that we don't leave any students behind. Many of you I'm sure will be thinking about the year 11s and what they're going to be doing. A separate video will be written or will be filmed I should say about that. So stay safe in the community, the very best of luck with everything and I look forward to welcoming your children back on Monday. Thank you.